Hello. Okay, for this lecture, we will be starting on the topic heat effects. Let me just check if nagre record. Okay. So, intro muna. Heat transfer. Uh, obviously, one of the most common operations in the chemical industry. So, as chemical engineering students, uh, you will almost always encounter heat transfer sa mga calculation nyo, even in higher chem ink subjects. And it deals with um, the thermal energy that moves to due to temperature difference. Yeah. It can happen in three ways. We have conduction, convection, and radiation. Let's see an example of a process, the industry. This is the um, flowchart for the production of ethylene glycol. It's an antifreeze agent. And we have the following reactions, the overall uh, reactions. So we start with oxygen and ethylene. First, yung dalawang ano natin, raw materials, dalawang reactants, they are brought to the temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. And then, once they, they are at 250 degrees Celsius, uh, they enter a reactor, heat is released. So, doon sa una, uh, nung hinheat sila, to that temperature, heat is introduced to the reactants. Sa reactor naman, diba, O2 plus C2H4, combustion reaction yan actually eh. So, heat is released. So, meron tayong tatlong products. We have, ah, no, just uh, one product, pero merong mga unreacted uh species. So, may product lang tayo yung uh, ethylene oxide. Pero may mga unreacted ethylene at saka oxygen. May gaseous state yan lahat. And then, yung ethylene oxide further ire-react with water para mag-produce na ethylene glycol. So, ito na yung final product. Pero, may kasama siyang unreacted water or baka kasi in excess. Yan. So, ang gagawin dyan ay mag undergo ng distillation para i-separate yung ethylene glycol. Again, dito sa reaction ng water at saka ethylene oxide, heat is released dito sa reaction na to. So, ano yung mga heat effects na nandun sa example? Una, yung sensible heat. Diba? Yung uh, tem the temperature of the reactants were raised to 250 degrees Celsius. Yan. Kaya, um, nag-introduce ng heat and it was absorbed. And yung sensible heat na reflect siya by a temperature change. So, from atmospheric temperature or ambient temperature, naging 250 degrees Celsius. And then, in the example, we also have the heat of reaction, uh, which is the heat accompanied in a chemical reaction uh, due to the difference in molecular structure and energy of the products and reactants. So, this sa example natin, yung sa combustion reaction ng ethylene, nag-release na heat. So, the other um, heat effects are yung heat due to phase change or yung latent heat at saka yung heat of mixing. Pero wala yan dun sa example ng ethylene glycol production. Yung letter B and C which is yung heat of reaction at saka yung heat due to phase change 
And these are determined from experimental measurements at constant temperature. Okay. So yung heat of reaction at saka heat of phase change, um, yun yung measure yan experimentally at constant temperature. Okay. When heat is added or removed from a fluid, uh, in part or in whole, saan natin gagamitin? Or ano yung purpose natin? Bakit tayo nag-heat transfer sa industry? Uh, the first possible uh, reason is to do work. Okay? To do work in the surroundings. And the second reason is we, we need the heat transfer to change the temperature of the fluid. Tulad doon sa example ng ethylene glycol na tinaas mo na yung temperature ng reactants. Possible din na gusto natin i-change yung phase ng fluid. Say, nagsimula siya ng liquid, gusto natin siya maging vapor. Possible din na uh, kasi kailangan natin ng energy to carry out a chemical reaction na hindi naman talaga siya spontaneous kapag ambient temperature lang. First, let's tackle sensible heat effects. So, dito, alam nyo na to eh, review na lang, diba? Walang, uh, walang phase transition, walang phase change, walang chemical reaction. Ano lang nangyayari? Just a temperature change. Say, for example, we have a homogeneous substance of constant composition. So, ang degree, degrees of freedom niya ay 2. Thus, the internal energy or enthalpy can be written as a function of two intensive variables. Since degree of, degree of freedom equal to 2, okay, we can write it, write it as a function of two intensive variables. Pipili lang tayo ng dalawa. Uh, Doon do ito sa tatlo, either temperature, pressure, and molar volume. For example, yung internal energy, gawin natin siya, isulat natin na in terms of temperature and volume. So, paano ba yun? Di ba pag nagsusulat tayo ng partial derivatives, di ba? Um, we take the differential of uh, u, right? With respect to T at constant B muna, kinoconstant muna natin yung isa, times DT, and then i-add natin yung partial derivative ng U with respect to V. Dito naman, uh, constant naman yung T times DV. Di ba ganun tayo magsulat ng partial derivatives? Teka, check ko lang muna. Mic test, mic test, okay. Yun. Uh, huh? By definition, itong partial of U with respect to V at constant temperature, by definition, yan ay uh, specific heat at constant volume. Okay? So, replace natin to ng CV. Replace natin. Magiging ganito yung equation natin, di ba? Uh, nabaliktad lang. Napunta... Nampunta dito yung CV na term. Mas napahuli siya. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mali pala. Sorry, sorry. Erase. Sinetest ko lang kung nakikinig kayo. Partial of U with respect to T. Ito yon yung CV, hindi ito. Erase ha, mali. So, this is the CV. Okay, sorry. Partial of U with respect to T, yun ang definition ng CV. Partial of U with respect to T at constant V. Okay, kasi baka inaantok na kayo eh. Kaya tinetest ko lang. Gising pa kayo. Ayan. Uh, so, ito yung papalta natin ng specific heat at constant volume. Okay, so ayan. Pinalta na natin. 
Ngayon, uh, itong term na to na nasa right, magsi-zero siya kung um, constant volume process. Bakit? Kasi pag constant volume process, walang BV. So, zero na to. Magsi-zero din yan if hindi naman dependent yung U sa V. Okay? So, magsi-zero na yan. And, mangyayari lang yon pag ideal gases and incompressible fluid, hindi dependent yung U sa V. Okay? So, true yan sa ideal gas tsaka incompressible fluid. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, ulit ha, ang definition ng CV ay partial of U with respect to T ha, hindi with respect to V. Baka mali to kayo. So, uh, tuwing kailan yun? Kailan to nagiging true? Kapag Yan nga, we're dealing with ideal gases. So, ma-simplify natin yung equation natin ng DU as CV dt. So, pag in-integrate both sides ng equation, ay ito na siya. Ngayon, uh, for mechanically reversible constant volume process, diba? Equal lang yan sa Q. Nag-discuss na natin to before. Tapos, okay. Next naman, uh, kanina kasi internal energy yung gusto natin. Uh, right now, enthalpy naman yung derived natin. Enthalpy. Express din natin siya in terms of T and P. And by definition, Cp is the partial of H with respect to T at, at constant P. So, ito yun. Palta natin ng Cp. Okay. So, magiging ganito na equation. And ngayon, ito nasa right term. Become zero. Ulit, paano? Pag constant pressure process. Kasi ito, zero na agad. No? Yung Dp, wala kasi yung change in pressure. Next is, pag hindi naman dependent yung H sa P. So, kailan lang ulit to true ideal gases or pag low pressure gases, solid needed outside critical region. So, yan true siya. So, pag ganun, nasisimplify yung, ano natin, DH natin to CPDT. Pag in-integrate both sides, ganun din, magiging, Delta H equal to CPDT. And for mechanically reversible non-flow constant pressure process, equal yan sa Q. Okay. Okay, move na tayo dito sa empirical equations of heat capacity. When we say empirical equation, ano ibig sabihin nun? Empirical equation derived from experimental. Diba? Derived from ex experimental or from experience. Um, so, kay Vanes, sa likod ni Vanes, meron kang values. And I'm sure na, na sa chat 30, nakagamit na kayo niyan. Diba? Yung mga values na yan ay iba't iba uh, per substance, per species. Okay. So, iba't iba yan. Meron kay Vanes, meron sa ibang book. Ano ang importante? Kailangan mo per reference sa aralin mo yung table and labels. Ano yung unit na required? Applicability. Diba? Yun. For incompressible fluids, CP and CV are same. Bakit? Kasi, at constant pressure, pag incompressible yung fluid mo, it is also a constant volume process. Therefore, volume is always constant. Okay? So, ulit. Incompressible liquids, kasi, diba, ang liquid, Pag kinompress mo, hindi na napaka-insignificant na change ng volume niya. So, constant volume process na rin siya. 
For an ideal gas mixture, each component in a mixture in, is independent of the others. Okay? So its properties is unaffected by presence of different molecules. O, limbawa, meron tayong mixture ng gases. Tapos, nagbe-behave ideally. So, yung ano, kada component dyan, wala siyang pakialam doon sa mga ibang katabi niya. May sarili siyang mundo. <laughs> May sarili siyang buhay. Yun. Uh, hindi sila nag interact Wala siyang uh, pakialam doon sa iba. So, ganun pag ideal mixture. Pero sa reality ba, ganun ba yung nangyayari? Hindi. Sa reality, meron silang pakialam sa isa't isa. Bakit? Meron silang inter uh, meron silang attraction, may rep repulsion, depende sa properties nila, sa uh, structure, sa polarity, what, maraming factors. Pero pag sinanabi natin ideal mixture, as if hindi sila nagpapansinan. Ganun. So, pag uh, ideal mixture, so, pag ideal, meron tayong IG sa taas. Okay? May Instagram sa taas. Joke lang. May ideal gas sa taas. Okay? Ano lang siya, yung CP mo is just a summation ng mga CP niya sa times the fraction. Mole fraction. So, ganun lang mag-calculate ng CP ng mixture. As in, kukunin mo lang yung fraction niya, mole fraction, sa multiply mo lang sa individual CP niya. I-add mo lang together. Tanggalin natin yung mga drawing ko. Okay. Yan, where y is the mole fraction of the species. So, for example, ito siya pag in-expand. Where A, B, C, and etc. are the different species. Okay. Dito mo naman natapos yung lecture. Sa next video na yung sample.